Hello and welcome to Center for Victory's podcast of your best day yet. Here at Center for Victory, we're here to help unlock, reinforce, and enrich relationships through personal and professional development. I am Eric Guy, Chief Victory Officer here at Center for Victory. Here with me today is a close personal friend and all around uh, fantastic <laughs> and good guy, Mr. Uh -huh. Paul Farrigo with Word Right Communications. And uh, to end the topic of the month, we're ending with a bang with you, Paul. Uh, our, our topic for the month has been Get Your Mind Right in conjunction with National Mental Health Awareness Month. And you are, uh, I'll, I'll say this, maybe you, you might not say it, but no. uh, I do believe like you are a master storyteller. No. And, and one of the best things that you do for people is really help them with what you call their capital S story. So welcome, Paul, and we're going to jump into that capital S story, but welcome to the podcast. Great to have you here. Well, thanks, Eric. I really appreciate that. I consider you a great personal friend as well, and we've had the opportunity to work together in a lot of different ways, uh, some of which we might talk about today in the podcast, and it's been a, a great honor to get to know you over the last several years we were trying to figure out the other day how many years it's been it's been a lot when we started your hair was still long and i was younger <laughs> <laughs> yes it was but yeah we've known each other for for a long long time and get together often but um you know, one of the things that you do that I mentioned earlier, Paul, is this whole idea of a, a capital S story, right. right? Right. So what the, what does that mean? I mean, I know what it is, but it's really mm -hmm. important and it's important for what we're talking about today with your mind, mental health, and, and just your whole overall health. So can you jump into that and kind of explain that to folks listening and watching? Absolutely. So I'll give you the very short definition of a capital S story. So one of the things that I do today, and I've been doing for about two decades, is I'm in the agency business, marketing agency business. Uh, we have an agency word right that started out primarily in PR, and we do a lot of other things now, including digital marketing. And for 20 years before that, I was in journalism. I started as a reporter, then I was an editor. Figured it out one time, I wrote probably 10,000 stories and edited another 10,000 over 20 years in the business. So for the people watching and listening, you know, you add that up, it's like 40 years of experience. So here's what I learned. There are stories that come and go. I used to say uh, a certain story today would be on the birdcage tomorrow, but the way it works today with our smartphones is it's on Twitter for 10 seconds or it's in your email inbox for a day and then it's gone. But a capital S story is different. A capital S story, we call it the capital S story because it's a story above all other stories. It gets a capital S. It's the story that answers why somebody would work for you, buy from you, invest in you, partner with you. If you run a nonprofit organization, why somebody would donate their time or their money to you. So it really is the story that defines who you are as a person, as, as a parent, as a leader, and then more broadly, uh, for those people watching and listening who work in an organization, which most of us do, it defines the character of the organization. Okay, yeah, that's a, you know, I think it back in, you know, to uh, Cynic's work about, you know, starting yes. to buy. Um, you know, people don't buy what you do, they do buy why you do it. Exactly. Okay. And, and I think why this resonates with me so much and what you do is because it, it transcends, you know, if you can understand that, I know you help businesses, but it transcends and we'll, we'll talk about it. It transcends into what we do in our communities, what we do in our families and things of that nature. Yeah. And, and you know, Eric, uh, if you start at the personal level, so many companies and organizations are, are guided by strong leaders, and, and I'm sure a lot of the people uh, watching and listening consider themselves leaders in one way or another. And so when you think about the capital S story, yes, our work at WordRight primarily is focused on organizations, but it always starts with the leader. And so there's this concept in marketing called branding. And unfortunately, the way that gets translated a lot is like, 
How big is your logo? What shape is it? What color is it? What's your tagline? But you know, you think about the time we're in right now and being in Mental Health Awareness Month, and with all the stress on individuals today, it doesn't matter as much to us what color the logo is or how big it is or whatever. It's the character and the nature of the organization and the people who lead it. And I look at that on a personal level, starting not only in terms of how we behave in our organizations, but why do we do what we do, you know, as individuals? What is our motivating story and view on life in terms of being a partner in a relationship or a parent or in a family? And, and you, you think about it, you know, and we, we have two daughters, my wife Brenda and I, and no matter what age they were, right? Amazing BS detectors, right? I mean, you could tell them one thing and they knew what the real story is. And, and really, that's a good model for all of life, personally and professionally, because it's not the story that we want everybody to think describes us. The capital S story is really guided by our behaviors. Who are we really in our relationships, personally and professionally? And then, like you said, in terms of our company, we extend that to larger organizations. Yeah, the capital S story in that personal and family life, uh, you know, the why. Why do you want to be a, a certain kind of parent, right. spouse, partner? Um, what higher purpose does behavior serve in all this? So you, you well, mentioned a little bit, but. Yeah, that's a very good question. So I, I firmly believe, I'm, I'm a person of faith, and I firmly believe that I have a specific higher purpose that relates uh, to my faith. And I try to live that in my behavior, in my relationship with my spouse and in my family first, and then carry that into the workplace, right? So whatever your beliefs may be, there is sort of like an internal compass in all of us, right? And, and you know, you think about it this month, Mental Health Awareness Month, I mean, all the stresses we're going in right now, for some of us, maybe that compass is a little broken, or maybe it needs to be adjusted, right? But the whole point of the capital S story is when you're clear about that and your behavior aligns with the story that you want to live as a leader, as a, a partner, as a parent, then things go much more smoothly, right? Back to what I said about kids. Kids know when your behavior doesn't align with what you claim to be representing, right? Yes. It's true in the workplace too with employees and customers, partners, et cetera. And I think the big lesson to take away there and, and why this is so appropriate for these times is because if, if we're struggling as leaders with that internal story, yes, whether it's at, at work, at home, wherever, then we can anticipate that others are going to be struggling with that as well. Absolutely. That is a very good point, Eric. And, and, and you know, the reason why behavior is important to me personally and in the work that we do is because that's the first test that any important stakeholder audience uses to assess what your character is, you know, the why, your, your capital S story. And when you're under a lot of stress, it's human nature to expect that there might be some disconnects between your behavior and your story. And, 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 and your point is, is so good because uh, everybody right now who works with leaders and organizations is looking at the behavior of the leader to assess how bad is this right now? Do I need to be worried about my job? Is everything okay? Is the company going to be able to deliver on its promises in terms of products and services or whatever? You know, one of the things that, you know, I see and, and, and why I know what you do. Well, one, you, you've helped us. I mean, long, long time ago, you really yes. helped us get our story in line. And that, that helped. And, and I know you work with some companies that we work with. But really being authentic to who you are. Yes. Um, and, and why that, why you have that why. Yes. But the, the point is here that, that I wanted to make is 
there's, there's all these complexities sometimes or what we perceive to be complexities in communication. Right. Is it, I don't, I know the answer to this, but yeah. people are listening and watching. If you have that story down and you continue to communicate it over and over again, what does that do for a company? Well, it really clarifies your ability to connect and engage with your stakeholders, which is a fancy term for employees, customers, partners, et cetera. So to your point, why storytelling? Because storytelling is the original form of communication among human beings. No batteries required, right? Person to person, one person to many. And the thing about stories that's really relevant to where we are right now, I mean, we are bombarded by information in the 21st century before, <clears throat> excuse me, this crisis happened. Now that we're in the middle, as we record this uh, podcast episode of this huge crisis, we're overwhelmed. Our brains are struggling. And, and you know, Eric, this is an area where the Center for Victory is really an expert. But a story helps you clarify because a strong narrative, uh, a great capitalist story has three components. Authenticity, which you just mentioned, a fluent storyteller, a good leader, and then you continually read the audience to make sure you're keeping them engaged. And when you think about the way most of us are working now, socially distanced, remote working, that is just more critical than ever. And particularly, you know, when you're in Mental Health Awareness Month, you've got to be thinking about that in terms of your team, your customers, all of your audiences. Am I really connecting with them? And a story simplifies that. You know, for example, and I use this uh, quite frequently, we focus on using what we call archetypes. And a, a common one that people know is David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. if, if I tell you that the story of your company is David and Goliath, you don't have to be a biblical scholar to know that the story is the underdog goes up against the giant and wins. And so a story, to your point, that's authentic and well-shared where you're continually engaging your audiences is going to simplify, clarify, and strengthen your communications with the people most important to you. Yeah, and I think, I, I don't know if I got this tip from, from you. It, it came out with, out of conversation. I'll take credit for it. But, you know, when, when you have that story, one of the things that you can do with that story that's, that's really important is that that's how you can use that in so many different capacities, you Absolutely. know, just in the workplace is, is how you hire, you know, yes. how you review, how you reward and how you recognize in, in putting it back on that story. This is what it looks like in reinforcing that to create a really strong culture, right? Absolutely. And, and, and you know, Eric, um, not only has our company helped your company, your company has helped us. And so one of the things we've done, to your point, when we're hiring uh, and, and, and we're promoting and we're coaching people, you know, we use great tools like the predict predictive index and others that Center for Victory uh, works with. And we're putting that story, you know, if we're going to hire somebody, the relevant portion of our story goes into that job posting, right? Because we're trying to attract people who want to connect with that story. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Um, lastly, Paul, um, you've got a book coming out. Uh, I do. want to make sure that first people know how to get in touch with you. And then right. could you tell us a little bit about your book and maybe give us a teaser? Absolutely. You got it, my friend. Okay. So to contact me, our website address is word, right, PR.com. So it's words like what we're speaking, write like what you do, what you do with a pen, PR as in public relations.com. And my bio's there, my email's there, my phone number's there. So you can do that very easily. Now the book is called, surprisingly enough, given what we talked about today, Finding Your Capital S Story, Why Your Story Drives Your Brand. So as we've talked about today, it's our firm belief and experience at our firm that once you have your story, 
figured out, it'll power your brand and everything else you do and your communication. It's going to be coming out in the fall, ideally in September. It's in production right now. We'll be teasing it out over the summer in June and July. We've got some sample chapters and some other fun things we're going to be doing to get it out there. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I know it's going to be packed with, with great information. And hopefully we can have you back in the fall to when, when that comes out, do a little kickoff celebration for you as well. Oh, that'd be great, Eric. I'd love that. Thank um, you. As we end, Paul, uh, you, you're, you've always been filled with great sayings and <laughs> quotes and mantras. Do you have one that you could share with the folks listening and watching? I, I do. You know, when we were preparing for this episode, I, I was uh, mentioning to you that I really do love quotes and, and words. And I, I got one that a lot of people have shared, but I think it's really appropriate uh, for the times that we're in right now. And this comes from uh, a very famous uh, Pittsburgher, Fred Rogers, um, of course, who um, had a great public TV show for many, many years uh, that was produced here in Pittsburgh. And, and this quote, I think, really re relates to the times we're in. Often, when you think you're at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something else. And Eric, I just really think that captures something very important for me personally and for the rest of us as well as we work through Mental Health Awareness Month and also this larger situation that the entire globe finds itself in right now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I, I agree. That's a great quote to end with. Thank you very much. Um, that's all for today, folks. Uh, we really appreciate you watching and listening. Make sure you leave this video a like, leave a comment down there, if you would, in the comment section below. Also appreciate if you'd hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so you can get notified when we post next. If you'd like more information, you could visit us at centerforvictory.com. And remember, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, make this your best day yet. See ya.